Mr. Klein here uh, with our first lesson of our next chapter, which is on physical and chemical changes. Now, for many people, this is just one lesson, and they kind of go over and compare and contrast and call it good. However, I know that students in my past teaching physical science and chemistry have found that physical and chemical changes is really difficult. So we're going to take them one lesson at a time, and I'm going to repeat the same things repeatedly and redundantly all over again. So if you're like, oh my god, Mr. Klein, this is like the 15th time you've said that. And that's because I want to make sure it's in your head that you understand this concept, and uh, we can go forward with you understanding what... Uh, physical and chemical changes are. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have a question for you right here. You have water boiling. Is that a physical or a chemical change? I mean, it's liquid water and the heat's being applied to it and now like steam and stuff's coming out. Now you might be thinking, well, Mr. Hine, that's a chemical change because it's changing to steam and steam's different than water. Well, the problem is you're incorrect because the steam coming up is still water. And that's the big idea between physical and chemical changes is whether a new substance is made or not. So it's a, like I said, for my example, uh, another example. So it's a sunny summer day. It's the bottom of the night. You're playing baseball at your local championship. It's tied. You're at the plate. You're looking at the pitcher. The pitcher's looking at you. He waves off the catcher. He's got the perfect pitch. He throws it. You hit the ball as hard as you can, flies out the park. You're the hero. You won the game. You're so excited you didn't hear the crash as your game, the ball from the game-winning home run hits your parents' windshield of their car. Smack. Okay, it's broken. And there's like this big gash and the baseball is sitting there. Huge area of broken glass. The windshield's useless now, but even though there's that big hole and there's broken glass all over the place, those little pieces are still glass. So what happened was a physical change or a change in one or more of matter's physical properties. Okay, so all of physical changes is a change in the physical property of matter. Okay, the matter is still the same. Nothing happened to it. It didn't cease to exist or become something different or anything like that. It's still what we were looking at it originally. In this case, it's still glass. In the introduction, I was talking about boiling water. The steam is still water. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's get started with our uh, graphic organizer. And let's look at our graphic organizer. So let's like, ask what is a physical change? Well, here's our definition. A physical change is a change in one or more of matter's physical properties. Okay, that's a nice short way and concise way of talking about a physical change. Is. So you're probably going to pause right here and create your graphic organizer for your section in your science notebook. So I'll go ahead and let you do that. All right, so how do we know a physical change took place? Well, knowing whether a physical change takes place is actually an easy process. Like I said with my example so far, is that you just need to look at the substance in question after the change. Look at the physical properties. If that changed, and that's all that changed, if no new substances are made, then... It's a physical change. If there is a new substance as a result, then what we have here is a chemical change, which is what we're going to talk about in our next lesson. Okay, so that's how we know there's a physical change taking place, is that, you know, just the physical properties change, no chemical properties changing. For example, we have a tree right here on the left. We have firewood on the right. Are they both still wood? Absolutely. Okay, so what we have right here is a change in shape or change in size, and that's really the first of several physical changes. What are some examples? There's so many physical properties of matter. We went over in the previous chapter that we're not going to create this big, huge list. Rather, I'm going to give some examples. Uh, for the first one, like I just said, is cutting an object into pieces, like cutting a tree into firewood would be an example. So we're going to add that to our graphic organizer right here. We have examples of physical change, cutting it into smaller pieces. Have a block of cheese, chop it into slices of cheese, physical change. The little slices are still the cheese, so, you know, there you go. Just a physical change. No new substance is made. Okay, the next one we could talk about is crushing a metal can. Okay, crushing a metal can. So if we go ahead and we look right here, this poor old can of Red Bull, uh, once was a nice tall slender can. Now it's so much smaller, more compact, and its shape has changed. Okay, it's squished on the brick floors you see in this example. So... Even though it's still crushed, though, it's still an aluminum can, okay? So what we have here is a physical change. There's a change in size, change in shape, okay? 
So we can either crush it or we can spread it out. I could take a pair of scissors and I could cut open that can and spread it out nice and thin and it's still aluminum. So as a result, it's just a physical change. No new substance was made. Okay, so there's two examples right here, cutting into smaller pieces, crushing or spreading out. And then we have the one that most people get confused about. For example, you have melting butter or water freezing into ice. Okay, this is one I need you to pay attention. I need you to know, and we're going to talk about it in the next section, that changing a state of matter is just a physical change. It's not a chemical change. Okay, this butter, this liquid area that you see is still butter. As a result, it's a physical change. There might be bubbling and stuff like that, okay, as it's warming up and it's melting, but it's still butter, okay? And what we have right here, if you can see, this is what we call snap freezing. The liquid water gets hit with an impact, and it freezes into solid ice. Now, we think, oh, Mr. Klein, it's solid ice. Ice, water, different names. Well, the problem is it's still H2O, okay? It's just frozen, okay? So as a result, it's still the same substance. So even though it's changed states from liquid to solid, that means it's just a physical change. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so let's go ahead and let's add this, okay? Changes of state of matter, freezing, melting, boiling, evaporating, condensing, sublimating, okay? Things of that nature. All of those are physical changes. Finally, we have right here is salt dissolving into water. The creation of a mixture whether heterogeneous, homogeneous, or even a solution is an example of a physical change, okay? If you pour salt into a cup and stir it up, the salt is still there. It's just mixed, just physically together with the water. No new substance is created, okay? So let's wrap up our graphic organizer for this section. Dissolving into a solution or creating a mixture, anything like that is an example of a physical change. So cutting into smaller pieces, cutting, spreading out, changing state of matter, dissolving to a solution, all of those things and so many more are examples of physical change. So to reiterate, okay, are changes in states of matter physical changes? Many people think that when matter changes from a solid to a liquid or from a liquid back to a solid, a chemical change takes place. However, a change in state of matter is a physical change. Okay, let me say this for about the 30th time in this video. Okay, a change in state of matter is a physical change. Like you saw in the example, frozen water melts into liquid water. It's still water. Okay, it's still water. Even though the temperature and even its appearance has changed, it's still the same substance. Water. Two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom, all bonded together. As a result, it's still water. It's a physical change. Ice melting to liquid water is a physical change. So if your teacher asks you, even if you're not from my class, oh, is water freezing into ice a chemical change? You can say, no, it, no, brilliant science teacher. It's a physical change because it's still water. Okay, so now that we have that in mind, you can notice I keep on saying the same thing. So let's wrap up this section on how to check if an observed change is physical or chemical. If you're ever unsure what you're seeing is a physical change or chemical change, you need to ask yourself this question. Is it still blank? Okay? And what the blank is, is whatever substance you were observing. If it's still the same substance as it was before the change, then what you observed was a physical change. If it's a new substance, then what you saw was a chemical change. Okay? And we'll talk about chemical changes uh, in the next lesson, and you'll probably have the same section in the next lesson also. So let's go ahead and let's look at this example. What you have here is you have dirt, okay? Dirt changes to mud, okay? We started out with dirt. We ended up with mud. So what we have before the chemical reaction was dirt. What we have afterward is mud. So is it still dirt and when it's mud? Well, all we've added right here is water, and we've mixed it up, okay? It, what the, the substances are still dirt, Okay, the parts of matter that make up dirt. So it's just dirt mixed up with water. It's just a mixture. So is it still blank? Is it still dirt? The answer, of course, is yes, it is. Okay, if it's still dirt, then it's a physical change. So what we can do is we can add this last section to our graphic organizer, how to check for physical change. Ask yourself, is it still blank? And in the blank, you put whatever substance you were looking at. If you say yes, then it's a physical change. No, it's a chemical change. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's wrap up this lesson. Um, we asked what a physical change. A physical change is a change of one or more of matter's physical properties. So however many physical properties there are, well, that's however many different types of physical changes we have. 
Okay, we can cut into smaller pieces, we can crush it or spread it out, we can change what state of matter is, we can dissolve it in a solution. That's one of many different things. And the question you ask yourself, if you're ever confused about whether it's a physical change or not, is, is it still blank? Okay, is it still that substance you were looking at before the change? If the answer is yes, it's still that substance, then what you saw was a physical change. If it isn't and it's a different substance, well, then it's a chemical change, and that's what we're going to talk about in our next lesson. So, there you go. That's your lesson on physical changes. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you understand it. Hope you know that ice and liquid water are the same substance, so it's a physical change. So, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know, and thanks for watching. Music